Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra T Designs and today I have the third page in my waterfall journal. So let's jump in. So I did grab out the Tim Holtz postal dies and that has this really cute little envelope in it and I'm going to cut three of them. So I chose three, well, two pieces of the pattern paper that I've been using. And then of course some vellum, just because I think vellum is just a really fun addition to this project. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm cutting out here. And then I'm going to run them all through my switch plus that of course is sitting off to the side of my screen, uh, just because you can't keep that in the focus of the camera. Uh, so I always just have it kind of off to the left hand side. And I did bring in my magic mat for this as well, just because I always have that on my desk and it helps me from needing to replace my plates as often. So it's kind of a great addition to my crafty space. And I've noticed that scrapbook.com has them sometimes as like a freebie. So if you've been wondering about trying one, keep an eye out because sometimes they give away the magic mat as just like a, you know, if you buy 25 bucks, you get one kind of thing. So uh, if you haven't had the chance to try it and you want to give it a go, uh, you should pick it up when they have it as just the, the free add-on to a purchase or whatnot. Sometimes they give it away just for free with any purchase, but I think sometimes they also have it when um, they are actually doing like tw you buy $25 and you get one for free or whatever. I don't remember what the amount is. I have a couple of them now because I've gotten them a couple of them free when I've ordered something else and I'm like, well, why wouldn't I get something fun for free? So I always kind of pick up the free item. It's kind of funny. Scrapbook actually usually has a lot of really good free items. Um, I got a whole alphabet die set recently that I got for free when I was ordering something else. So they have some good stuff. You guys got to keep, keep your eyes on them if you're interested, um, because they have a pretty fun store, but yeah, so I'm going to create the three envelopes. I chose to do three because you guys know that I like uneven numbers and sadly I cut the envelope upside down. So... I mean, I don't really care about that, but if that's a concern for you, be aware that one of the flaps is the length of the two tabs. Like here, see, you can see it on this one, the vellum one, like one of the flaps actually covers the whole two tabs that come in. Uh, and then one of the other ones doesn't. So I guess it just depends on how you want to build the envelope. I chose to just build mine upside down because I don't really care. But if you want them to be right side up and you might want to be aware of that and then I brought in my rotary trimmer and I just trimmed two random strips of glitter cardstock I didn't measure them I have no idea what width they are I just cut them off um and I cut off the full length so that was an eight uh I would think it was an eight and a half by 11 sheet of white glitter cardstock and I just cut um, cut them off and adhered them to the edge of the panel here. And I, I just randomly cut two sizes. I just thought that it would be a really fun texture to add to the edge of this waterfall. Uh, cause you can still see it when the waterfall's closed, right? Cause that's kind of the thing, the whole tabs idea. Um, so I thought this was kind of a, just a fun, interesting texture to add to the edge and a little bit of sparkle. It never goes awry. You guys know, I love things that are shimmer and shiny. So I do have a tendency towards putting, you know, glittery things on my projects. So I just adhered one right against the edge of the waterfall tabs. And then the second one, I'm going to adhere slightly in a little bit further just because, you know, I wanted a little bit of distance between them. And honestly, I eyeball this as I eyeball everything. I don't know that they're perfectly straight, uh, but I don't know that that matters. If that bothers you, of course, you can always bring out a, you know, a T-square ruler or something and have an easier time making it straight. But to me, I just, I don't really care about that. So I just adhered them down where I wanted them. And then of course, I'm going to trim off the excess so that it's not actually hanging outside of the two, the, the tab there. I, I call them tabs, but I really, I guess they're like a page. Um, I'm not really sure what the appropriate answer to that is, but I'm going to call them tabs. But here, when you see me put these together, so I'm going to use some double-sided adhesive to adhere these just because it's faster than using glue. You could, of course, use liquid glue. Just make sure you don't glue your envelope closed. Um, but you're going to see that I'm going to adhere the bottom up and it covers where these two go together. So if you chose to do it the other direction, which would have made my gnomes the right way up, um, the envelope doesn't look quite as neat. So completely up to you. I mean, you can put them together however you like. Uh, it really doesn't matter. It's just that I chose to kind of go the more clean route with them. 
but there's no right or wrong way to do that. Uh, so side note, and this has nothing to do with this project. My husband bought me a we are memory keepers cinch for Christmas. And I've been thinking about doing a, like a little unboxing and a project with it. You guys let me know if that's something you want to see on the channel. Um, I kind of want to create a journal that just has like different kinds of cardstock, maybe some watercolor cardstock and some just regular, maybe my hammer mill because that's like my favorite white cardstock. You can use Copics and whatnot. Um, maybe, you know, just different cardstocks in it. Uh, and then it will lay flat because it would be a coil bound journal. And there will be, you know, no, no, it, it's not going to be like a junk journal or an art journal or a bullet journal. It's going to be like all of them and none of them, if that makes sense, because I don't, I don't know what I want to do in it. So I really just want a space that has, you know, all the options. I can bust out my watercolors and maybe I can swatch them and then paint a little flower or whatever, you know, like it can be whatever I want it to be. Um, but that is a very like side personal project. So let me know if that's something you actually want to see or not. Because um, I don't need to do it on the channel. I can 100% just do it, you know, of my own time and not worry about it on the channel. But if it's something you think you'd like to see, then let me know. Leave me a comment. Tell me your thoughts. Um, because I, I mean, I'm always game to share stuff that I'm making with you guys, but you know, because it's meant to, that one's specifically meant to be a, a personal project and not necessarily something I'm going to share. Uh, it doesn't need to be made on the channel. So tell me your thoughts. Do you want to see that? If yes, then I can absolutely do it as a video. If no, then that's okay too. Uh, that means I can just kind of have a little play on my own. So not a big deal either direction. Completely up to you guys. Let me know your thoughts. And then for this part, I'm just going to use some more double-sided tape and adhere my three envelopes in. I did intentionally line them up more towards the bottom of the page just so that the flaps could sit open on top of each envelope or alternatively this third one. It's still within the page, so it's not going to hang outside of the page. I did did consider uh, adhering the top flaps to each envelope. Um, I didn't end up doing that obviously in the end, but I considered doing it. Uh, so I I might still do it. I don't know. I've just kind of left them free, free flapping in the breeze there, but I might go and adhere them down to each envelope. And then that kind of covers the vellum one where you can see a little bit of the adhesive sticking out. So yeah, I just thought that was kind of a fun way to do it. But right now you could open or close them. Really, it's up to you. And then I decided to bring in a little bit of lace because I'm kind of playing a bit with texture and interest in this journal. This, this, I don't even know if I should call it a journal. I'm going to call it a journal because there's nowhere really to write or sorry, to add pictures. And I think when I think of an album, I always think of like adding images. So I am going to call this, it's kind of like a mixed media journal, really is kind of what I'm going for. And I did add a little bit more of the lace across each of the bottoms of the envelope. Um, but I didn't show it because it was the same thing. And then here I, I had lit my little candle. And then when I closed the lid, <laughs> it blew my candle out. I thought that was kind of funny. So I left that in there for you guys, just because it made me laugh when I saw it happen. And then I did pick out a snowflake wax stamper here. So I couldn't, I don't know what happened, but my, it didn't film me pouring the wax onto the bottom of that little envelope. So you can't see that. All I did was warm the wax up in the spoon, pour it on that section where you see that I've, you know, put it down. Um, put a little bit of distress rock candy glitter in it and then stuck my snowflake on top of it my snowflake stamp thing um and then I, I you saw me remove the stamp um but I also poured out the leftover wax you can kind of see the little purple dots in the center of my matte glass mat there we're going to add those on later that's just the leftover wax from when I poured it onto the um, little envelope at the bottom I just, I don't like to waste the wax, so I usually make little um, pearly bits with it, especially the metallic ones. Uh, and then because, you know, it's, well, it's not really a Christmas project. It's more of like a winter project. Um, I had to add some mica flakes just because I think that they're really, really pretty. And they always make me think of snowy, like snow stuff. So I did add some of the Tim Holtz mica flakes to random areas on the envelopes. And I'm going to bring them in on the little card that I'm going to make for the center pocket as well once I get there. But this is kind of where I'm going to bring in those little pearls that I made with the leftover wax. And I'm just going to adhere them up in that top corner because I don't want to waste them. And I think they're really pretty. But I do find that the wax makes beautiful pearls. The little bit of leftover 
um, I've, I always do this. This is why I didn't just re like re-record doing another wax seal. I've done wax seals before on the channel. It's not really a new thing for me. So if you want to see a different video of another wax seal a little more in depth, I can definitely do that too. But as a general rule, um, I've done them before, so I didn't really re-record what I was missing. I just kind of left it. And then in the same postal die set from Tim Holtz that the little envelopes come with, they actually have this little card that goes inside of the little envelopes. So I chose to cut that out of some ivory cardstock. I wanted it to be a bit off white. And then I'm going to kind of just decorate it with random pieces from the same um, pattern paper. So this is a leftover piece of pattern paper that I cut off when I actually made the, the journal. Um, so I'm just ripping kind of little pieces off. This piece this washi tape I'm going to bring in in a second. This is from my stash. I have no idea where it came from, but it matches the blue beautifully. And I just wanted to touch a blue in this little card because I thought that would be really pretty because there is blue throughout the journal, but I haven't really worked in blue yet. I kind of, you guys know purple is my favorite color. So I do tend to kind of go towards purple instead, but blue is pretty. And I had this beautiful tape that matched perfectly and I wanted it to have a little bit of a ripped ed edge. So that's what you see me doing there. I did have to bring in my reverse tweezers so that I could get a really thin ripped edge. Um, but I like that look. So that's kind of what I was aiming for. And then I'm going to adhere down those little pieces of paper. I'm sorry, this is almost out of frame. I didn't realize that my camera was a little higher than it usually is. So you don't get to see, you know, it's not very well centered. Um, but I'm trying to make sure you guys can see everything that I'm kind of working on here. But I just adhered those little pieces of cardstock or pattern paper onto the card. And then I'm going to go through the embossed die cuts and pick out this super cute little snowman and add him to this card. I just wanted something that had a little more shine to it. And these die cuts are really cool uh, and of course I want to use the collection right so I want to use different elements from the collection on each page so I'm going to bring in different things hopefully as well as random stuff out of my own stash just to kind of have fun with this and then of course because you know he's a snowman we're going to add some mic flakes randomly on this card in three different areas I started with two areas but you guys know I like uneven numbers so I am going to add a third little line of glue for this and for me personally I just find that I do a little bit of glue and then I dump some of it on and then I use my finger just to pounce the mica flakes into the glue so that they lay flat because um, they do have a tendency to want to stick up if you don't kind of make them lay flat so I do intentionally go and pounce my fingers on them just to make sure that they're going to be flat so that I can easily slip this card into the pocket because this is going to live in the pocket that center one so or I guess it's an envelope, not a pocket, but I intentionally went to um, add this to that one center pocket. That's why I'm only going to do one. You could do three. Uh, I chose to do one because I liked the inside of the other pockets already having color and interest. So I just did the one little card, but you could of course make three. You could make pff, more than that if you wanted to. I just chose to go with the the one that I'm going to add. And then I brought in some white rub-ons here. These came out a while ago. Um, I have it in my stash still. It's just another, you know, fun product to add in. And it's hard to see it on the card. Like I can see it in person. It's really hard to see it in video though. So you can't really see it on the card, but I added some to the envelope as well. And there you can see it really well. So these white ones show up beautifully on vellum, which is interesting. I'll have to excuse me, I'll have to remember that for uh, next time when I'm working with these in, these uh, rub-ons because that was a cool kind of discovery for me because I'd never used them on vellum before. So I wasn't really sure how it was going to react. And then here is the project, guys. I, I hope you like this page. I hope you're kind of enjoying this little bit of a different look at a journal. Um, I've been having a lot of fun making it, though I, you know, I have to really push myself to come up with different ideas so that each page is something different. Uh, so I've been kind of really having a lot of fun with that. But that is the project I have for you guys today. Also, happy new year. I <laughs> can't believe it's 2024 as of today, which is super exciting. So hopefully you guys had a wonderful New Year's. Tell me all about what you got to, up to yesterday. If you did anything fun, let me know. I'd love to hear it. So that is what I have for you guys today. Leave me a like, leave me a comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I do new videos every Monday and Thursday. Thank you so much, guys, and I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.